Facebook Clicking, the London and St. Thomas Association of Realtors, LSTAR, has just released London's data for the month of November, showing price drops all across the board. I can't take this Indeed, as we'll see today, almost all of the price gains that we've seen in 2023 have just about been erased. And the data comes as the Bank of Canada just announced that it would be holding on interest rates for its final announcement of the year. With today's data being the final data set that we'll receive heading into the 2024 market, probably one of the most uncertain markets that we've seen in a long time, now is the time. I think it's worth taking a look at how far the London market has come since this point in time last year. So what I want to do today is go over London's real estate data for the month of November, take a look at how the current market compares to previous Novembers that we've seen in London, discuss the year-to-date data, and then go over some implications heading into the 2024 market. We are still waiting for the release of Canada's national real estate data for the month of November, set to be released next week, and we'll obviously have an update out on that data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into London's data. Under the data, first up, the benchmark price. The benchmark price, if you'll remember, that's the price of a home, which represents the most popular set of features. The benchmark price in October was sitting at $592,100 and dropped down significantly in November to $577,400. So that's a nearly $15,000 drop in the benchmark price, bringing it back down to close to where it was in February, when the benchmark was sitting at $583,500. And we saw something very similar with the average price. The average price in October in London was $608,081 and that dropped down to $594,202 in November. So that's a nearly $14,000 drop in the average price in November. Again, bringing the price back down to lower than it was in February when it was sitting at $614K. And the median price also saw a major drop in November. The median price, if you'll remember, that's where half as many homes sell over that price and half as many homes sell under that price. The median price in October was $583,500 and that dropped all the way down to $560K in November. So that's the $23,500 drop in the average price. Again, bringing the median price back down to lower than it was in February. We can't afford to wait. And this comes as no surprise, homes are selling for more under asking. When we look at the sales to list price ratio, which measures by how much over or under asking a home sells. So if a home was listed for 100K and sold for 95, the SLPR would be 95. The SLPR in October was 98.8 and dropped down to 97.2 in November. So on average, homes are selling for 2.8% below their asking price. Probably even more than that, as the SLPR doesn't capture those homes which terminate their listings, relist and resell at a lower price. Shut up. And finally, the months of inventory measurement, the MOI. The MOI measures if no more homes came to market, how long would it take for London to completely run out of homes for sale? The MOI in October was 3.9 and as of November is now sitting at 4.4. So if everyone in London just stopped listing their homes for sale, it would take 4.4 months for London to completely run out of inventory which, as we'll see, is abnormal for November. So, we have a $14,700 drop in the benchmark price. The average price is down $13,879. The median price is down $23,500. Homes are going for more under asking, and we have much more inventory on the market. And the reason for the price drops is London having an overabundance of supply, especially for the month of November. In November, we had 15% more new listings come to market than we've had in November for at least the past six years. And while it's not immediately clear why we have so many more new listings coming to the market in November, beyond anecdotal evidence, we could very well be seeing some stress in the system. Recall a poll at the beginning of 2023 that said that 45% of holders of variable rate mortgages said they could only last nine months at current rates. We've had three rate hikes since that poll was conducted, and it's been well over nine months. Regardless of the reason, we have an abundance of supply, but also we have dwindling demand, with the MOI being at its highest point in November for at least the past six years. And of course, Economics 101, when supply outstrips demand, we see price drops. That cannot happen. And we've been seeing this throughout the latter half of 2023. 
In November of 2022 in London, the benchmark was sitting at $575,500, peaked 50K higher at 626K in June, and then fell back down to $577,400 last month only $2,500 more than a year ago. And we're seeing something similar with the average price as well. The average price in November of 2022 was sitting at 611 k peaked in May at 664 k and is now back down to $594,000, a $17,000 drop. So, for the most part, all of the gains in prices in 2023 that we saw during the spring market have been lost. And, all things being equal, we should see more price drops coming up for the next few months. Or... Then, the big test comes in spring of 2024, especially with so many predicting that we could in fact see rate cuts from the Bank of Canada by that point in time. The big test will be, will demand come back to the London market in time for the spring 2024 market? As of right now, interest rates are still higher than they were a year ago with a decent five-year fixed rate at this point in time last year, sitting at 4.99, and now, due to the recent drop in yields, sitting at 5.34. And, as mentioned, many are forecasting multiple rate cuts come spring of 2024. With that said, since we're discussing the market since December of 2022, I think it's worth noting that at this point in time last year, none of the big banks predicted that we'd have a policy rate of 5% this year. Whether or not we will get those rate cuts in time for the spring market in London remains to be seen. With that said, the Canadian economy is also significantly more weaker than it was a year ago. One year ago, the unemployment rate was sitting at 5.1 and is now up to 5.8 and the economy is continuing to weaken. Even if we do get those rate cuts from the Bank of Canada that so many are predicting, it's not clear what the Canadian economy will look like at that point. Will London buyers flood back into the market in the spring if the economy has been severely weakened? That remains to be seen. So, in summary, going back over the London market for 2023, we saw prices shoot back up in the spring and are now almost down to where they were in November of last year, erasing all of the gains that we've seen over the past 12 months. You know, I can be trusted now. Where the London market lands in 2024 is anyone's guess, as there are a number of questions which remain unanswered. If we do get rate cuts, will they be in time for the spring market? How bad will the recession be? Will the inflation rate get back down to 2%? And of course, as we've talked about so many times on this channel, what is happening with the U.S. Treasury market and the bond yield stemming therefrom? With that said, we will continue to track London's real estate market on this channel throughout 2024. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, thanks so much for watching.